Hotel One, bringing you together. Viewers of Entrepreneurship Couch across the globe, welcome to this week's show. In this week's show, we are going to talk again to a commercial lawyer, a corporate law uh, expert who is Chie Zashonua. She has been practicing corporate law for quite some time. She was with us last week when we discussed about partnership contracts. She's back again this time talking to us in terms of mining laws. We've had a number of people asking us in terms of how can they go about making sure that they observe and pay particular attention to mining laws. Chieza, welcome, uh, welcome to this week's show. Thank you so much for having me again. Right, Chieza, last week we discussed about partnership agreements and a lot of entrepreneurs were actually very happy you touched on a number of issues that tends to affect people when they are getting into partnerships. This time we are going yes. to discuss about mining laws. Yes. May you take us through in terms of uh, what are the critical mining laws that regulate mining sector? Okay. If a um, company, let's say there's a mining company that wants to um, start mining, they have to observe about m more than 50 uh, acts and regulations. So I can't state them all today. But there are more than 50 acts and regulations that have to be observed by someone who is starting their business in the mining sector. Of importance, you have the Mines and Minerals Act, which is the major uh, act that regulates uh, mining in Zimbabwe. And now there are other regulations that flow from the Mines and Minerals Act. Um, just to name one, uh, you have the mining general regulations. You also have the mining health and sanitation regulations. And the list goes on. And also you have legislation that will affect an entity that is in the mining sector. You have the labor law. The labor laws then, um, they affect the employment relationship between the employer and the employee. You have the Water Act. You also have the, I believe it is the, um, no, there are quite a number of acts because I'm trying to name all of them, but I'm realizing that it might actually take the whole segment to, to name all of those acts and regulations. Yes. Hmm. Critically, when one is looking at mining, people consider yes. exploration and uh, prospecting. Would yes. You would you talk to us briefly in terms of what laws regulate those particular two issues? Um, the law that specifically regulates that area, you're looking at the Mines and Minerals Act. That is the law that stems all other regulations, where all other regulations stem from. If I can call it the Mother Act, if I can call it that personally. Uh, that's the law that will tell you the rights that you have, the obligations, what needs to be paid, who needs to be paid, uh, the time periods, everything. If you're going to go into mining, you cannot ignore the Mines and Minerals Act. You cannot ignore that act. Okay. Now, coming to the issue to do with prospecting license. Yes. How much, how much does one need to do in terms of the actual prospecting? Firstly, um, if one is, that's actually the start in terms of mining. That's the beginning where you say, you know what, I want to mine. But before you even go anywhere else, the beginning is a prospector's license. Uh, you actually have to acquire a prospector's license to have any rights to explore or any rights to prospect in Zimbabwe. You can't just uh, start the mining process by skipping that process. And now the Mines and Minerals Act uh, gives provision that you have to be a Zimbabwean resident. Uh, you have to be 18 years and older. So you approach the relevant uh, Mines and Minerals officers. They are provision, provision, provisional officers all over Zimbabwe. You approach them. You make an application, you give them your ID, you fill out the application, you pay the prescribed fee to the mining commissioner 
Once you have done that, then you await uh, receiving your prospector's license before you embark on prospecting and and uh, mining in Zimbabwe. Though now in Zimbabwe, there are two f- types of licenses, prospector's licenses. You have an exclusive prospector's license and you also have the ordinary prospector's license. So the just briefly to to just state the ordinary license just allows you to prospect in zimbabwe um the exclusive uh prospectors license now gives you the name says it it's an exclusive right in a specific area to say let's say let's talk about avondale area for example it's just an example you're then given the exclusive right to prospect in that area So no one can then come in and then say, oh, I also want to prospect because you are holding the exclusive rights to prospect in that area. Mm. Mm. We are very grateful in terms of what we are discussing now. We're just going to go for a very short break. We'll be back very soon. To our viewers, please stay with us. We'll be back in a short while. L1, bringing you together. Chiedza, welcome back. Earlier on in the first segment, you were talking about a lot of things to govern mining. Now, I would want to ask from you, are there particular minerals that are governed uh, by these eggs that you've been talking about? Um, all minerals uh, are governed by, by the eggs and regulations um, that I gave reference to. Um, you have the also mineral oils as well. They're included in the in as part of the what what are you saying? The minerals that are also included in terms of mining. Yes. Mm-hmm. Jeb, I've heard a lot of people who have said they've gone into mining, but later on they've discovered they did not have the actual required papers. How then can one be so sure that he has got the legally enforceable or recognized papers to get into mining? Uh, the advantage that you have now uh, is that um, if one is to go through the Mines and Minerals Act, you have uh, the mining commissioner, you, you can approach the relevant mining officers um you approach them you can even go and say you know what i want to register a mining claim in this area can i register it uh you have some places which are restricted in terms of the act it will restrict some areas from being um open to prospecting uh and then you can do a verification you can have someone that says i have a mining claim that's already registered but you can also do your due diligence and due diligence and also just verify if they're up to date with the payments and if they're actually the holder of such mining claims. You can always follow up. You just take the information from whoever is engaging you and you follow up at the offices directly and they will advise you because they keep the relevant maps uh, and uh, paperwork. So anything can be verified. In terms of uh, mining, Chieza, I may have my own claim, but I may need to involve foreigners either as a partner or an investor or even some of them to come in with particular expertise to work with me. How does, yes. our, laws, how does our laws then govern this? Okay. Uh, our laws now, when you want to bring in uh, specific individuals, especially if the individuals are foreigners. You, they need, if they're going to come in physically to Zimbabwe, they would need uh, residence or permanent residence uh, papers that are issued by the immigration officers of Zimbabwe. And also they would require an investment uh, license, which is issued by the Zimbabwe Investment Authority. So at least if those are then observed, then they can carry on business hand in hand with you. Mm. Chiedza, thank you very much for that. We are also going for another very short break. When we come back, we are going to talk about in the indigenization laws and how they've affected mining.
ഓക്കെ tell one bringing you together our viewers all over the world welcome back to the third and final segment of our show we are talking to a commercial and corporate lawyer she heads us on what she is discussing with us in terms of what are some of the mining laws that we need to pay particular attention to and observe cheza welcome back okay thank you Kids we had discussed a lot more in terms of other laws now i would want to find out from you at one time in zimbabwe we had the indigenization act and it was regulating in terms of who can be involved in mining and what sort of percentages in terms of ownership that one is uh, sh- should be having are these laws changed should anyone just get into mining or some laws have been aligned or amended <clears throat> Uh, there has been an amendment um, uh, to the Indigenization and Economic Empowerment Act in 2018, uh, which allowed now foreigners um, or foreign entities to own 100% in mining rights, except for platinum and diamond. Um, then now there has been some development as well, where you had the government. authorizing foreign investors uh, in the diamond mining area to own more than 49% in a diamond company so those have been the changes uh, of late now if we talking about mining uh, for a lot of people they also realize that there should be or there could be fees to do with mining would you briefly talk to us in terms of what sort of fees are involved when one is getting into mining okay uh without being extremely specific uh as we had said previously from if you're going to get into mining you start by prospecting and exploring so now you need your prospectors uh, license in that case there are certain fees that are paid to the mining commissioner and then even now after you have found a specific area where you want to mine you now need to register a claim there are certain payments that are made as well so now you have a mining company let's say that is fully functioning uh you still have duties you have royalties uh, and you have mining fees that you have to pay and i think you be aware where someone has a mining claim and there are duties that need to be paid and if they don't pay them they forfeit that claim so you see there are lot without being specific there are a number of um duties royalties that need to be paid in mining fees that need to be observed by a mining company hmm. i'm very grateful in terms of the information that you are sharing with us i have got no doubt that a lot of our entrepreneurs especially those that are involved in mining would benefit from our discussion My last question to you then would focus on the transferring of a mining claim. If I happen to mm-hmm. own a claim and I would want to dispose of it or to sell it, is it allowed or what else is involved if one would need to do that? Okay. Um if you can, firstly let me say you can. You can uh dispose of your mining claim. you enter into an agreement with the individual who wants to pay uh you but however that agreement has to be registered uh in terms of the mines and minerals act that agreement has to be registered and there are monies that now need to be paid as well uh the person who purchases the mining claim specifically has to pay i believe within 6 months uh payment has to be made and now in terms of due diligence as well you have to ensure that you're not buying a claim that is restricted for example if the claim if the person has not been up to date with the mining fees you can't you can't then sell that claim so you also have to do your due diligence firstly to say uh, are you able to purchase the said claim if you are able to purchase the said claim then you register the agreement you do everything but i think the first uh, starting point if it's a transaction 
you have to make sure that the mining claim is there registered in that person's name and also if you are able or if it's available for you to actually purchase and then from there you register the agreement uh, between the parties it's registered and then after the agreement is registered then there are monies that have to be paid within a specified period and then then you can say at least there has been a transaction mm. Cheers, thank you very much for the information that you have given us so far. I need to quickly put a disclaimer to say, whilst Chiedza is a corporate lawyer, she is a practicing lawyer, but the information that she has been giving us, it's just uh, the minimum information that one can get from a lawyer. If one would need to further engage her, she is available to be engaged by various and different entrepreneurs because we are not going to have a situation where people would then rely on our program to say, I happen to make a decision based on the information that was provided on, on the platform. Our information is just barely the minimum that we can provide. However, Chiedza is very much available to be engaged further. Thank you very much, Chiedza, for your time. Thank you so much for having me today. It was such a pleasure. Thank you. To our viewers across the globe, that was Chiedza, a commercial lawyer. She's going to be coming onto our platform talking to us in terms of various issues to do with law. Once again, to our entrepreneurs across the globe, please continue to watch and subscribe uh, onto our shows. Thank you once again, Chiedza. Thank you so much. Tell one, bringing you together.